morning. I want to start by thanking Lauren because there's a huge amount of work that Lauren and her team have done just to bring this together today. But what's wonderful about the protest movement for Taji and Dolphins here in London is that it's a volunteer movement. It's not being led by big, massively financed NGOs, of which there are many. It's being led by individuals with passion, care in their hearts who are giving up their time, their money to bring this together. So let's just have a big round of applause for Lauren and everyone involved. Thank you. When we were here, and we've been here many, many times over the last few years with thousands and thousands of people, last time we were here, a certain individual that's a hero to this movement was being held by the Japanese authorities. In my view, a prisoner of conscience, someone that was being held only, only because he wanted to bear witness to the horrible cruelty and tell the rest of the world what was happening in Taji Cove. This man, a hero to all of us in this movement, Rick O'Barry is here with us today. Let's have a big round of applause for Rick. He's been with us at the offices of the Daily Mail and Metro and other newspapers down in Kensington. I'm just going to ask him to say a few words now just to, to say how pleased he is to be here. I know he really is pleased to be part of this London movement and about how much we are achieving with his support. Rick, can I hand over to you briefly? Thank you. Well, I just want to underscore uh, what has just been said about the grassroots. Most of everybody here are grassroots, and uh, I've been here a few times and there were thousands of people, a couple of thousand people here, most of them grassroots people. And there are millions, there are millions of members of large organizations and small organizations, garden clubs, not just animal protection community, but garden clubs. People in the UK are very, very compassionate with their pets and gardens. And, and I, I just feel like we can get 10,000 people in this street right here. Yes. I know that that's possible. And if that were to happen, this embassy would stop this dolphin slaughter. There's no question in my mind, that's what happened in the 80s. And that's why whaling ended except for Japan, of course. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a matter of, how, so how do we get 10,000 people here? We have to get in touch with the leaders, the decision makers of these very large organizations which are based here in London to contact their members. Those millions and millions of members would like to participate, but they don't know about it because they're never contacted. So Dominic and I, we just had a short meeting. We're gonna be working on that. We know a lot of you, uh, I've talked to several people today, a lot of you have contacted these large organizations with millions and millions of members. Uh, but unfortunately, and I have also, but unfortunately when we call them or email them, we're talking to the wrong person. They just hang up and move on to the next phone call. We've got to get to the decision makers and Dominic and I are going to be working on that. So the next time we're here, we have several thousand people here. Yes. It's, it's, a, it's an achievable goal to shut down this dolphin slaughter. And I, I really believe that the key to it is London, as far as Europe is concerned, at least. You could never do this. You wouldn't get this many people in, in, uh, in Washington, D.C., for example, at the Japanese embassy. You cannot get that close to it. This is one of the few places you can get this close to the Japanese embassy. We should have, we should have this entire street full of people and that sidewalk, that would get on the front page of every newspaper in Europe, that would rock the Japanese government. So, anybody that is in the uh, range of my voice, uh, if you can somehow work on that between now and the next demo to see if we can find a, uh, a, a way for these groups to contact their members. It's all about their members. It's not about, because I've contacted several groups and they will send two or three representatives from the office. That's not what we're talking about. Actually, Japan Dolphin Day was founded uh, on the concept of these groups contacting their members, not sending two or three people from the office. It's the membership we're after. We might be able to get 20,000 people here if we could just get them to contact their members and let them make up their own mind if they want to participate in this. I think they would. If they knew about it, they just don't know about it. So that's the, that's the, that's, the challenge is how to get the groups to 
have contact their members and let them know about this demonstration, this most important demonstration, or even a march like we just did. If we had, can you imagine 10,000 people or 5,000 people marching like we just did? That Dolphin Slaughter would end. I feel sure of it. So uh, I'm going to be working on that. And Morton Free is going to be working on it. We hope you guys will too in your own way on social media. So thank you for being here. I'm, I'm honored to be in your presence. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, Rick said something very important. I, you know, I spoke at a wildlife conference in Bristol on Sunday, and uh, I was talking about a lot of big issues about wildlife conservation in Britain. And I was saying just what Rick is saying, that actually a lot of the big NGOs, and I work with them, and I will name some of them that I work with, I have a great deal of respect for them, Friends of the Earth, Greenpeace particular, I4, all those organizations, WWF, have significant presence here in the UK, as well as the rest of the world. But they don't have it easy now. Bear in mind, there are a number of things happening. Social media is changing the nature of wildlife conservation. It's turning all of you into much more powerful individuals. You can achieve things that five or 10 years ago would have been unheard of. And that's making all these big NGOs that have big, big cash sources coming in and millions of members and thousands of staff to support have to review how they connect with you. I will tell you now that Born Free understands that. That's why I'm here. Because I believe very, very much in having to connect with people like Rick and you and being able to do these types of street campaigns. I speak to thousands of people every few months in this country on issues from whales and dolphins to ivory to rhino poaching to protecting lions and trophy hunting. We'll be down in Plymouth for badgers tomorrow. 34 marches we've had in this country for badgers over the last two years. That's the biggest rolling wildlife campaign anywhere in Europe has brought tens of thousands of people onto the streets and made it the fifth most common issue of complaint to MPs in our parliament last year. So what we show, actually, as Rick has quite rightly said, if you bring people out, you create media attention and you create political, political power and pressure. And that's what changes things. And a lot of those big NGOs do the most wonderful work. And often it's behind the scenes and it's important and it must continue. But remember where they started from. They started with people getting in boats, trying to stop whaling ships from Japan and other nations killing these animals that we're protesting about 40 years later. Or about nuclear tests and issues of that kind. The people that started them were just like you and just like Rick. They were driven, they were angry, and they were willing to risk everything to wake the world up. The problem is, that some of those big NGOs have almost become like businesses and government departments. They almost replicate the agencies they have to work with. And that's understandable, but you must go back to connecting to people who care. You must have frontline conservation. You have to have people that will stand up and say enough is enough. In the streets, in the fields, on the boats, in the water. If you don't have that, if you don't stand up, these animals will be destroyed and killed the ignorance, greed, and corruption that is getting worse in this world, not better. Would you agree? Yeah. And there is no excuse, no excuse for any of the large NGOs not to be campaigning on this issue. It doesn't matter how broad their relationship is with the Japanese government across a wide range of issues. The slaughter of dolphins at Taji Cove is a disgusting disgrace to the world. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. There is no justification on cultural grounds. There is no justification because you say you're supporting the Japanese fishing industry. We know that all those dolphins that are killed in Taji Cove are largely worthless. Most of them sell for less than 400 dollars and end up as fertilizer and dog food. Do you think that's acceptable? No! The only, only reason this tragedy continues, as Rick knows very well for all his work over 30 years, is because of the greed of the marine park business that want to take the best looking animals drag them away from their families and slaughter them in front of their eyes, put them on a jumbo jet, fly them across the world, and put them in a concrete prison to perform, to make money. Do you think that's right? No! It's a disgrace. These animals deserve our protection. The exploitation of these animals, the so-called entertainment, disgrace and disgusting as it is, is something that has got out of control in the modern world today. Now, we did see yesterday a statement from SeaWorld that we could welcome as a step in the right direction. That they will stop breeding their orcas, but as 
Rick said earlier on, primarily that's just a PR exercise to make people feel better about the business, to boost the share price, to bring people back in and to relieve their consciousness about the cruelty. If SeaWorld really cares, it will take what's left of its breeding stock and it will put them in a semi-captive environment and provide the best quality of care for the rest of their lives. Wouldn't you agree? Yes! And that's what we've got to continue to do. We've got them halfway where we want them to be. We now need to get them the full way. We need those animals out of those tanks in semi-captive environments, living a decent life of what they have left. And we need to show the rest of the world and all these other marine park businesses in Thailand, Korea, Turkey, Egypt and other areas that it's no longer acceptable to exploit these animals. It's no longer acceptable to put them in such disgusting conditions for our so-called entertainment. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. yes! We are making progress here. You know, I spoke to MPs in Westminster recently that have spoken to the ambassador here. He does not want this protest movement to continue. This embarrasses him. It embarrasses his officials. It embarrasses his bosses back in Tokyo. And you know what? When we march through the streets of this city, as we do in our thousands every few months, Japanese tourists are taking thousands of pictures and they're ending up all over social media in Japan. But those lot in there cannot stop that. They can't censor it. They can't prevent it. And what it's doing is making a lot of people in Japan ask some very serious questions about why they go on holiday and suddenly they're faced with placards saying their country should be shamed, has blood on its hands because of something that horrible is going on to basically make a few greedy fishermen rich. They quite rightly are saying, hold on a minute, that's not the way I want my country to be viewed around the world. Wouldn't you agree? Yes! Yeah. Yeah. That's why we have to keep this up. And Rick is right, we will go back to those big NGOs and we will say to them, don't forget what started you in the first place. Don't take for granted that people will continue to fill in the membership forms and continue to give you money unless you come here and throw your weight behind this campaign. Wouldn't you agree? Yes! Because we do want thousands here. And I'll tell you what, it'd be a great coup for WWF and Friends of the Earth and I4 and World Animal Protection, if they join with Born Free, they join with Rico Barry and all the people involved in this campaign, and we brought this sorry, horrible madness to an end. Wouldn't you agree? Yes! Because that coming together, that cooperation, is so important. I think we're all going to have to just put up with me shouting. We're almost at the end of this. <laughs> we have come a long way, and all of you must keep fighting for this. There is something exciting happening in Britain today and it's unique anywhere in the world. And I feel that I'm very much part of it and I'm honored to work with you and everyone else that I work with in all the campaigns we have up and down this country. I meet politicians, I speak to journalists all the time, I do work with these big NGO heads that Rick has talked about. And I can tell you, we are waking people up. We are changing the face of wildlife campaigning, not just in this country, but around the world. You should be proud of that, but we've got to keep fighting. One of the things that I take most importantly today is the education to the next generation. When you talk to school children as I do, and I no doubt Rick does as well, I went to speak to a school of 500 children with the Discovery Channel recently. And a lot of those school children in what is a public school with a good background and high rates of education and affluence were shocked by what I had to tell them about Taji Cove and what I had to tell them about SeaWorld. Many of them had been to California. Many of them had been to Florida or Texas to the marine parks. Their parents had taken them there. They were fortunate they could afford to. And they spoke to their teachers after I presented. And they said, I was horrified to learn what we were told today. I'm not going to go back. I'm going to tell my parents I won't go back. And if I have children, I'm going to tell them they're not going back either. Wouldn't you think that's right? Yes! That's what we've got to do. We will be the last generation, I hope, to bring this madness to an end. And we will have huge thanks to give to Rico Barry and a few pioneers who've taken all the knocks and all the intimidation and all the threats from government and big industry just because they want to speak for animals and they want to protect these dolphins. And when we get to that point, we can stand up with our heads held proud and we can tell children in the future that we were the generation that made a stand. We were the generation that said enough was enough and we were the generation that brought this mad cruelty to an end. Thank you very much. Yeah.